Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Nice to see you today. My name is Dustin Cormier, and you're watching an episode of How to Rock Astrology. Today's episode, we're going to be discussing the dark and mysterious Venus in Scorpio. This is if you are born with Venus in the sign of Scorpio. Thanks for coming. Now, today I plan on reading from three different texts. Uh, I guess I should put the first ones first. We're going to read from Stephen Arroyo. We're going to read from Isabel M. Hickey's A Cosmic Science. And then we're also going to read from Phyllis Vega's Erotic Astrology. Uh, but before we do, I, w I like to put my little, my own personal Vedic, tropical Vedic spin on things uh, to give another perspective. Uh, and I would like to say that as a tropical Vedic astrologer, you might vibe that what I say is slightly different from what the Western astrologers say about it. I would say there it's kind of both, especially when we read Isabel M. Hickey's more esoteric Western occult idea of Venus and Scorpio. It says that Venus is in its detriment in Scorpio, and that's because it's opposite its home of Taurus. Uh, I'm going to explain why the Vedic system wouldn't necessarily say that Venus in Scorpio is necessarily detrimental by sign. In Vedic astrology, the real emphasis of a, plan, of, of a planet in its sign, of describing what, how good it is, quote unquote, or how natural that planet feels in its sign, is more derived by the energy of the dispositor of that sign and the, f the relationship of the planet to that dispositor. In this case, we're talking about Mars. Mars rules the sign of Scorpio. And in Vedic astrology, Venus and Mars are neutral to each other. They're not friends and they're not enemies, which means that Venus being in the sign of Scorpio is neutral, like I said. Although I will say that it's two signs away from its Venus's debilitation point in Virgo. So it's still kind of a little bit close to its debilitation point. Not so bad, really, that we could say anything really ill about it. Terribly ill, anyway. Uh, we're going to talk about how Venus, what, what it wants to do and what it's supposed to be doing and how that works in the sign of Scorpio. But by my Vedic reckoning, I would say that Venus and Scorpio is pretty much neutral, at least in terms of what Mars is to Venus. Uh, Mars is a passion planet, just like Venus is. So Venus and Scorpio, the Venus in us, which is looking for mutual benefit, mutual regard, mutual benefit, like, you know, like I'm saying, uh, this is what the Venus in all of us is trying to do. It's the water. We get water by giving water in a mutual way that feels mutually satisfying. And Venus in a Mars sign has the ability to do that. It's just that it has to, it's pushing Mars, right? It's pushing for its receiving, which is a little weird, uh, but Vedic astrology considers it to be pretty much neutral. The Mars of Scorpio is receptive, psychological, and it understands how to give partners what they kind of want. And also, there's a tease that Venus and Scorpio can kind of do in terms of playing on an attitude of giving what the other person wants in a way that's teasy and kind of exciting. Uh, for those who dig that kind of placement, you know, uh, somebody with Venus in a water placement would especially dig this kind of intriguing, subtle, almost like a power play, but it's more like an attraction play because it's Venus that we're talking about, right? So uh, I want to just give a quick little spiel about what Venus is in astrology is my understanding before we go through this. Venus and the moon share the province of the second chakra, the, the water chakra, the Svadhisthana chakra. At least this is in, according to one system of Vedic astrology. Ernst Wilhelm, in his Graha Sutras, 
gives us this idea through what's called the Panchatattvas, the five essences. So being the arbiter of the, you know, in Vedic astrology, the first five chakras are ruled by the first five, or, you know, the planets excluding the outer planets and excluding the sun and the moon. Sun and the moon rule the Ajna chakra, the sixth chakra. So Venus, you know, Mercury is the first chakra, and then Venus is the second chakra, the water chakra. So Venus ought to connect you to the feeling that you have inherent value or goodness, which attracts people to interact with you that cause you to be creatively inspired by the mutual biological water interaction, the personality interaction. The, uh, so the water chakra gives subjective enjoyment in life, which makes you know working hard and satisfying ourselves. <clears throat> Really, it makes work feel satisfying. It typically shows that what we do for our work is something that makes us connect to people that we actually want to connect with and to kind of connect with a career that feels good in the long run. <clears throat> so not only that, but we also it, it also, more to the point, it's the water spot is chronic. Svadhisthana chakra. It's lower down, so it's going to connect us to people that we want to be around. It's the type of people we want to be around. Not as strongly as the moon, but really in a social way. Of, you know, the moon's more about our needs, and we attract the type of people that we need to be around. Venus is like the how we want to be with the people that we're around. And it douses and therefore sustains the fire of the Manipura chakra, ideally, when Venus is working well, along with the moon. This is what the water chakra does. Uh, it it'll also allows us to feel like we can attract people without trying. We can attract resources through the grid, the energy grid of love and attraction and support from friends and lovers that are all around us. This is what the water chakra is about, and this is what the Venus and the moon do. Venus does it through value, through what we can give to others that they might enjoy, which is easy in us. It's something that we enjoy doing, and since we enjoy doing it, it's like water pouring from us that feels valuable. It, it's a valuable commodity, because whatever it is, is we enjoy doing it, which means we're going to keep doing it. So people are... You know, we, our Venus is something that we are attracted to, but also that we attract because it comes from us. You know, Jupiter satisfaction comes from something kind of that we do in a way. Uh, and it doesn't need support. It doesn't need competition. Uh, it's more like v Jupiter is a golf thing, but Venus is a sport thing. It's like, how do we stay afloat amongst all the attraction of others by attracting to something in our soul in another person that is inherently there? We don't really have to fight to attract through Venus. Even though this is a Venus that likes the pulling and hauling of Mars in a way. But it's still how it keeps the attraction in the easy way that it does. That's what Venus is all about. How do I attract someone without trying, in a way? I, this goes to say that Venus, Venus and Scorpio can try without trying, which is sort of interesting. <clears throat> Venus is about mutual benefit, and when it's well dignified, it aligns with situations that bring mutual benefit to you and to the other person. And I do want to rec rem remind everybody that this video is just about the signs. This is Venus in the sign of Scorpio. So there's so much more to define what Venus is. But this is at least us talking about Venus and its sign. Uh, and I also want to say that the strength of Mars in the chart, the placement of Mars, the dignity of Mars, if it's in the sign of a friend, then Mars is in a sign, a field, where the soldier is given resources that make given experiences that make it feel confident in being a soldier so then venus and scorpio attracting through its toughness and its its strategy and its 
knowing what people are all about and how to apply it in a uh, confident way. If the Mars is strong, the person will be able to do that, and this Venus will get more satisfaction. It will be respected and admired for what it does, because that's what Venus really wants. Is we get satisfaction in life by being respected and admired for what Venus does, and it, that's what it wants to attract: is being appreciated for what we do. Um, you know, that's the funny thing about appreciation is that, you know, we attract partners through our Venus who appreciate what we do and they want to appreciate people for what we do, just like we want to be appreciated for what we do. So this is how Venus kind of works with that mutuality. So Venus and Scorpio, what are you like? First, let's have a... You know, I said we we're going to start with Stephen Arroyo, but I feel the need to start with Venus and Scorpio by Isabel M. Hickey. As I said, this is the book that gives a little bit of a harder picture here. Venus is described as being in its detriment in this sign. Uh, again, I'm a tropical Vedic astrologer, and I'm steeped in the Western tradition. And I think that this is a book that comes from the 60s. Most, so much of the stuff is very esoteric and very good. It talks about different types, different aspects of the soul. The, hum, the human soul, which is Venus, and then the animal soul, which is Mars. And this is why it says that they kind of, the Venus and Scorpio can have trouble, because it's the civil aspect of ourselves trying to operate through the under ebbing vibes of Scorpio. We, the, I see the logic. You know, I see the logic that's here. But I still believe that Venus can operate in any sign that is ultimately... It's As a Vedic person, I still think, after reading this, that the fact that Mars is neutral to Venus shows that really the placement of Mars can make this under ebbing human civil soul trying to work through the under ebbing aspects of mars i think that it can be uh, it's 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 neutral in my opinion and it doesn't necessarily mean that venus can't do what it's wanting to do in this sign the only thing i will say again is that it's close venus here is still kind of close to its debilitation in virgo this is what makes me at least agree a little bit to an extent that there is a bit too much pushiness in this sign by it left by its own devices but I don't think it's that bad <laughs> so just keep that in mind this is Isabel M Hickey a cosmic science we're reading about Venus in Scorpio Venus in Scorpio is in its detriment here according to the this idea it's because it cannot function well in a do domain ruled by Mars because Mars is everything aggressive, forceful, and outgoing, while Venus draws to herself through the power of love. Again, in my opinion, if you have to use strategy and this type of expression in order to gain love, if you gain love, then you still got it. Venus represents the attraction principle. She draws everything to the center. Mars rules the animal soul, while Venus, the love principle, rules the human cerebral soul. So passion and aggressiveness ultimately need curbing when Venus is in Scorpio. There is selfishness masked by a friendly outward manner. And it's kind of a fearful, you know, trying to functionally get something out of the person and trying to protect itself, uh, trying to stay on top and not be too reciprocal, which, you know, in, in order to not become a doormat, uh, this is where this idea is coming from, especially because, again, this Venus is close to Virgo. But if this is a Mars that's very well aspected, I feel like this person will have security in themselves because they're used to putting out actions and it happening, which means that you might not necessarily be the type of person who's outwardly nice but inwardly fearful if your Mars is well-placed. 
So selfish desire and self-will can be too strong with this combination. They can be cruel or suffer from cruelty because of karma tied with the misuse of the love principle. If that has occurred. This person can be strongly passionate, yet also strongly inhibited at the same time. The love need nature could use regeneration and reorientation and basically therapeutic understanding, uh, talking to others about the nature that you are, about having Venus in Scorpio. Find other water Venuses that you can kind of talk to about this sort of thing, or anybody, your, any astrologer, so that you can just kind of work it out for yourself. <clears throat> and the nature of love, it's just generally anybody with insecurity of any sort should be using the resources of others around you, accepting that you feel that you've been pushed into a type of nature that you have, and talk openly about it so that you got nothing to fear. You know yourself, you understand yourself, and then you can apply your Venus and Scorpionic willfulness in a way that is not sourced in protection. Though Venus and Scorpio can be very attractive to the opposite sex, their love can be a stormy one until the lack of real lovingness, if there is a lack of real lovingness, once they recognize it and redeem it and face it in a, the way, a scorpionic, cathartic way, then this is a person who is very capable of deeply passionate love. Very good. So a little bit more to this end. This is coming from Stephen Royal's Chart Interpretation Handbook. Venus and Scorpio, you know, Venus, Stephen Royal tells us that Venus is how one expresses affection, feels appreciated, and gives of themselves. Venus and Scorpio is said to express affection intensely, passionately, obsessively, and with extreme consuming feelings. There's an urge for pleasure colored by compulsive desires depth, and passionate emotions, which really, after, over time, you're going to learn how to channel these in a way that's not more sapping from your vital energies and your water stavistana chakra. Uh, that's not, the compulsion isn't losing more than it's taking in. Especially if you have a well-placed Mars, then you'll be strategic about your passions. Give and take with others generates a healing and transformative energy, probably a necessary energy. You probably breathe with your confrontations of social interactions with others. Your inspiration breathes. Social and love needs can be hindered by an inclination to secrecy and a reluctance to trust others because it's Mars and, and it's a water sign. It's listening very deeply and really wants to fully get enough data about a person before engaging with them in a way, especially because the passion nature is so strong in you. If you meditate and you see and observe the compulsion of your nature and consciously try to draw that compulsion in, then you can channel it better. This is something that would be useful to this type of personality. Be discerning and brahmachari about the nature of your passions and the things that you are so enticed by. Because they can be used like a powerful dragon. You just don't want that powerful dragon burning down your bedroom. You know what I mean? Social, yes, we already read that one. This person needs to penetrate deeply into a relationship with intense emotional power in order to feel close to another person. There's a deep emotional power that this person needs to connect through in order to feel truly close with another. Although again, this can be too extreme. This is something that ultimately is a beautiful part of who you are. 
and you're probably going to connect with someone who has either fire or water signs to blister out and to be appreciated for how much you get into everything that you get into in that plucky scorpionic way that all scorpio placements do uh it's part of who you are the idea is to not throw the baby out with the bathwater. don't throw away your passionate energy but don't let it be so compulsive that you throw your gunpowder away to thoughts and tendencies and actions and interactions and lusty fantasies and connections with people that ultimately aren't really where you're at and where you want to be. Where's my last book? Oh, right. So, folks, uh, this has been me giving a little bit of a spiel on Venus and Scorpio. Last little bit we're going to get from Erotic Astrology by Phyllis Vega. And this is us talking about Venus and Scorpio. This is kind of more the love-making, romantic sort of nature of this placement. Venus and Scorpio confers magnetic intensity and deeply emotional, romantic, and sexual nature. An extremist in life and love, you give yourself totally to everything you do, and you expect the same kind of involvement in return. You want to be appreciated for that depth. While part of your appeal lies in your apparent obsession with the object of your affection, what you actually have is a strong and sometimes jealous need to control or at least set and fix your significant other. There's a desire to attract in a way that keeps a person set in a fixed pattern of rapture over what you are which is sometimes an annoying bag to have to keep up but that trance like scorpionic serpentine magnetism that you can do apply get out of a partner that you apply to a person when it's applied right, it can be rock and roll and juicy, you know? So, again, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Don't feel like you have to be intensely this way all the time in order to keep a person. Venus works smarter, not harder. The water spani stana chakra does, I should say. The water chakra. <clears throat> so you can have a strong need or want to control your partner. But this may not be immediately apparent, and you'd probably never admit to it. You not only possess your beloved, but somehow you make it seem attractive to be possessed. Hmm. Some cool writing going on there. When first meeting people, you're likely to be cautious, taking time to observe them. You're able to bide your time and wait for the right moment to take the relationship further. There's a hint of danger or perhaps some kind of pluckiness with you, which can be a major turn on for some people. And your actions promise deep commitment and intense sexual pleasure. Your tendency to guard your privacy can make you seem like a tantalizing mystery just waiting to be investigated. Very cool. You know, I always just like to roll with this book because it gives you an interesting picture of the personality of this Venus. So, I hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope uh, me going through these books has been something juicy for you. My name is Dustin Cormier for How to Rock Astrology. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know, uh, you know, drop a comment and let me know if it was something that was up your alley. And thank you very much for watching. See you guys later.